It's New Brew Thursday! Woo! And we got the Roman Pine here. Hi! Hey. Maria and Brian. What's up? Yep. Uh, Scarpello and Divine. There Correct. you go. I said it right, didn't I? You did. Yes. Because I, I it, it. it's not spelled divine, it's spelled divine. No, it's spelled divine. <laughs> it is spelled divine. Yeah, yeah you're right. No. <laughs> it's spelled divine. So you got the you, you get the pronunciation right, you get the spelling wrong, yeah. oddly enough. D E V V I N. Yeah, it usually yeah. goes the other way around. So. Yeah, right. Not the divine olives, because you probably don't touch yourself when you're thinking about me. No. Correct. Yeah. Just checking. I'm glad for that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are in town. Um, before we do anything, I want to talk about a little bit about what you guys, because the Roman Pine is such a, it's, well, I met you guys at the Great Nebraska Beer Festival mm -hmm. and fell in love with what you guys do just because I think it's the coolest thing in the world. So talk a little bit about what the Roman Pine is. and Basically, we live in an RV and we travel to breweries. So we've been on the road for about a year and a half. And it's we've been to cool. about 14 states and almost wow. 160 breweries. Uh -huh. Nice. That's the next milestone, I think, 160. Do you keep yeah. track? Like, I've been to this. He has an there. Excel document. Yeah. I was going to say, there's going to be a logbook somewhere. <laughs> we're, we're Somebody's a computer programmer. <laughs> <laughs> you. Well, yes. Well, you work, with, you work with computers as well, right? Yeah, I design. Yeah. Okay, so because I mean that's a big that's a big issue with something like that is like how do you make a living, right? But both of you yeah. do jobs mm -hmm. that are you're capable of doing wherever you're at as long as you have an internet connection. The best right? part Thanks about it is the expenses are low, other than beer. We spend a lot on beer and gas, beer. but gas is not that much. If you commute an hour to work every day, we spend less than six hundred a month. Which we were gas. doing. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so that's it's, it's really not. I mean, you I can would go totally have thought that it had been about two. That's or three the first times thing every yeah. th everyone. That's mentions. what everyone thinks. Yeah. So and I, you guys do because you you don't have a destination for you guys. It's the journey. That's right. Correct. And so the journey takes what it takes and whatever. That's cool. Yeah. So we're doing a beer from Lawrence, Kansas. Yeah, which right. is where you guys come from. Yeah. Obviously. Uh, Free State is like your local brewery if you were to have one. Because do you consider yourself having a local brewery anymore? Yes, we yeah. definitely love Lawrence, even though we hit the road. I mean, they're like, peace out. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> we'll always go back and it'll always be home for us. And, right on. Uh, Free State has definitely had a huge influence in how our trip and life has taken because without discovering good beer through Free State, I don't really know where we would have been on this yeah, trip. Yeah, they're the ones who got us. Really kind of interested in craft beer, and once we got on the road, uh, you know, it made it because uh, when you that we could seek out. When you set out, you weren't like, "Hey, let's travel around the world and see all the different breweries in the world." It was right. more about let's just go see the United States. It was just a time to change what we were doing in our life and discover new things about ourselves and where we should be going. And one of the things you discovered is that you were raving alcoholics and needed to go to every brewery in the United States? Well, I hope to think I'm not <laughs> a raving alcoholic, but I do enjoy a beer a time or two. Nice. Very good answer. Yeah. Very yeah. good answer. Well, cheers to gypsying. Yes. And cheers to Free State. So this is their oatmeal stout. I don't know if you mentioned that. I did not. I mm. like it, though. It's, um, oh. it's got an interesting head for an oatmeal stout. Yeah, mine's big and fluffy. Although I can't really see it in my glass. In like that I gotta, glass, per yeah. se. Pattern. Um, but it's got a nice aroma to it, for sure. So this is one it's of their flagship beers. They do a Copperhead Pale Ale. Mm -hmm. They also they just started bottling two years ago. Okay. So um, you can really only get it locally right now. I'm not sure if right. they're in Missouri yet, because we've been on the road for a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I think they might be. Um, I know they're definitely in Kansas City, Kansas now. Okay. And they have plans to hit those surrounding states in the Midwest. So. Well, they were nice enough to send us this six-pack when they found out that we were going to do a show with you guys. Thank and you to Steve. Thank you guys. Definitely. Cheers. Always that was awesome. the good beer. Um, uh, I actually knew about Free State from my father who had been to Kansas and picked up some of their beer. Because he's, I got him into craft beer, so he's totally into like, hey, I'm going to do this and I'm going to buy these beers and whatever. So um i actually like the stuff that i've had from them and this is one of their beers i enjoy quite a bit as well so i was actually mm -hmm. completely unfamiliar with these guys this is my first free state experience but this is really nice it's very tasty it's got like got a lot of really great chocolate notes it has a nice like kind of like bready toastiness to it you know it's very solid on those stats so yeah Yum. that's yeah. you know it's it's one of the things i think the craft beer industry kind of loses sight sometimes of or the, not the industry but like the craft beer fans and consumers or whatever is it's like when you can find a well-crafted oatmeal stout, that's a find. Like that's Definitely. that's a good beer to drink. You know? That's true. It's like it's one of the, like Barney Flats from AVBC. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, not not one of their beers that they're extremely known for, 
but that's a damn good oatmeal stout. Yeah, and absolutely. so when I drink something like this, it's like they can brew this beer really well. Same same with like standard styles. It's like that makes me excited about them because mm -hmm. then when they do decide to go into the let's get crazy and start doing this and whatever, it's like I know they're going to do that well as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, it's like I tell homebrewers, you know, you have to learn the rules before you break them. And when you have a brewery who knows the rules, who really, you know, has their solid line down, I mean, it's a sign of, of talent. And, right, you know. exactly. Yeah, yeah. the uh, head brewer has been there ever since they started in 89 uh, and Free State was actually the uh, first uh, brewery since Prohibition in Kansas. Nice. They actually had to go to the uh, go lobby some laws to get it uh, get it righted again. Excellent. Nice. <laughs> That's excellent. I love when I when when breweries kind of do the grassroots like we're changing mm -hmm. the law thing like. Yeah, like dogfish, dogfish and whatever. It's like you you get you, you, you get to that point where you're like, I know why you have this law. I don't agree with it, and therefore I'm going to fight you on it, and I'm going to exercise my democratic right to say you are incorrect, and now it needs to be changed. Sure, exactly. <laughs> so, this law has been stupid for sixty years. <laughs> exactly. Well, and thank God they did because I mean, if anything to me says Lawrence, Kansas, other than Jayhawks. It would be this brewery. I mean, it's so it's a great local feel. Mm -hmm. nice. I think also was part of the appeal of going to breweries to get to meet locals because we experienced that so much at Free State. I mean, almost weekly Monday nights they got you know discounted pints. It's like you're going to Free State. You're sitting on the patio. Right. It's just you the, see like, everyone you see there. Where well, it's, knows it's your interesting. Name. Yeah, it's interesting because my experience with breweries in the Midwest versus breweries like out here. Because a lot of the breweries here are basically like buildings in an industrial park. Yeah. And, you know, they have a tasting room or whatever, and it's cool. It's There's nothing wrong with that. But, like, when you go out to the Midwest, it's almost like we're not a brew pub, but we have a patio, and we have this, and we're kind of established in this, like, thing that kind of, like, you drive by, and you're almost like, I think we could probably eat there, could we? Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, they definitely more, more have... More hangout destination, yeah. Right. So it's like... The, the breweries get a little bit more, and I, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that land is cheaper and zoning is easier and that kind of stuff for it. But, um, you know, I just, I, that's one of the things I appreciate when I go back there. It's because I really hate going to the Midwest. No offense to the Midwest. I just really do hate them. <laughs> but, it's the, but it's the craft <laughs> brewery, it's the craft breweries that make it tolerable for me. Because yeah. I go back there and I, there's so many phenomenal craft breweries there that are just not getting. Exposure because they can't, you know, they don't have the ability to. So it's kind of funny you bring that up because Free State is actually a brew pub. They have wonderful food, not Great. to keep plugging Fair it, but um, but <laughs> when State. we started the trip, <laughs> we didn't realize that not all breweries were like Free State. So we would show up in industrial districts not knowing where we're mapping ourselves to. <laughs> And there's sometimes not even a tasting room. Yeah, sometimes right. it's just you know, a production like, it's facility, just a, and they're like, so "Hello, like knocking yeah. on a door." Can I help you? Yeah. <laughs> can I just? You know, we don't do that. that. Like, <laughs> there's a place down the road you can get the beer. So. Oh yeah, that that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> we did drive two hours to get here. So. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna send you off now to Master Pairings, and you will see beer and food being paired in a delicious way that will make your mouth water and mm. want to make you lick your screen. Do we Please get some? do not. You don't. Sorry, it's not that kind of shoot. Don't right. feel bad. I haven't gotten some yet either. So, oh you know, well. Master Pairings. I don't know. There's clubs for that. Yeah, Bill, <laughs> Bill has a restraining order against Matt. It's kind of awkward. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, go go and do that, and we'll see you in a minute. Hey everyone, welcome to another Master Pairings with me, your host, Bill Sysak. Today we have Stephen Johnson with us. I say I am here with you. Yes, you I'm are. I'm having a good time. Anyways, today I thought I would do a beautiful wild Fiji. From wild the waters Fiji. Of Fiji. Uh, swordfish. Okay. And I, I was stuck through the heart by a swordfish once. I did some, it's asparagus season, so I did some fresh young asparagus. Oh, yummy. Um, little lemon, olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic. Beautiful plate. Yep. And the oldest glass, I think these glasses are older than I am. Yeah, <laughs> nice try. <laughs> we are trying today, we're going to pair this with our uh, Stone 15th Anniversary Escondidian Imperial Black IPA. Which answers the age-old question about whether or not it should be a Black IPA or a Cascadian IPA or a 
dark, pale. A, as ale oxymoronic or... as black and pale in the same phrase mean when it's a black beer, it, it explains what it is. But I don't always agree with Greg Cook, but when I do, it's about this particular issue because I agree that IPA, no one says black India pale ale. No one says those words. Yeah. IPA has taken on a whole completely different thing now. So. so we're doing some retro glasses. I have a second anniversary glass from Stone. Didn't trust Stephen with that, so I gave him a fourth anniversary. Um, wow. Nice pour, Stephen. That's because you were being mean to me. Yes. So you got a bad pour. Suck it. Cheers. Beautiful nose. Oh, yeah. It's got this Very roasted delicious. malt characters, but yes, this bitterness and hop. The hop characteristic Profile. really comes through nicely on this, um, and it blends so well with the roastiness of the, the black part of the ale. Yes. I understand what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's a nice marriage, and it works beautifully. And I think it's going to go really well with this. Uh, there's a little chimichurri sauce on there, so there's a little spice, a little garlic. What is a chimichurri sauce? It, it's a, Other than the coolest name of a sauce ever. It's a uh, South American sauce mm -hmm. that has... Um, that's heavily predominant in garlic, and you'll see when you taste okay. it. Okay, so just it's like there's oh, no bone, obviously. This is, this is deli this delicious looking. Mm. Oh my god! Now normally I'd pair a beer like this with um, darker roasted meats, but I think it goes really nicely with that. I'm gonna mm -hmm. try a little of this asparagus. Well, the texture and look of this is very steak-like as it is. I mean, obviously it doesn't taste like a steak, but I mean, you get a lot, I think, in my opinion, please correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of, a large part of pairing has to do with the mouthfeel of the pairing with the beer as well. Well, that's a component, definitely. And so when you have something like this that has the same texture as like a nice steak or whatever that just melts in your mouth, the creaminess of this works really well with it. But the fish side of things and that nice light kind of, what? I don't want to say fishy taste because that's a bad kind of way of putting it, but like what you expect to get off of this with the garlic and the, the, right. nice, the nice seasoning works really well with the hot pill. Well, the oilier the fish, the, the more of that so-called fishy taste you're mm -hmm. talking about. Now, um, this what this really does, it accentuates the malts. It really brings out the mm -hmm. malts and the roasted grains. You get this really nice chocolatiness that goes beautifully. It works really well. And then when you get into the asparagus, don't be afraid, Stephen. It's oh, I've had, I've had some, but I'm in love with the swordfish right now. That's what I like about black IPAs because they're very versatile. Mm -hmm. So you have all those roasty malt characteristics that pair beautifully with, um, you could do for you vegetarians out there, you can do a uh, beautiful <clears throat> cordial mm -hmm. portobello mushroom, mushrooms, yeah. with some cheese on it. I love to do that. But you could do zucchini or one of Greg Cook's favorite. You can do some eggplant mm -hmm. and um, just roast it off. It goes beautifully. And then um, you can go a little bit lighter, something like this with the swordfish. Goes really nicely. Um, oysters on the half shell, beautiful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a very nice beer, and I could definitely pair this with. This a lot works of amazingly. Now um, we live on the coast, so swordfish. I, although this is from Fiji, so clearly local is not an issue. Yeah. Sorry, of, it's not local sustainable. Well, that's not where I was going. But um, for like somebody that's in the Midwest or whatever that wants to try something like this, how hard is this to make or to get or whatever? It's as hard as going down to your local grocery store and buying some swordfish. Okay, and I mean, like cost-wise and like how um, did you prepare it? That's what I'm getting at. I uh, whipped up a chimichurri sauce, spread mm -hmm. it over the top and broiled it in the oven. Okay. It's very simple, the chimichurri sauce is, we'll include that, maybe we can do a recipe on the uh, for the show. Sure, um, yep. And, uh, it's very simple. Usually mm -hmm. it goes on beef. Skirt steak, it's amazing. Okay. But it also goes really well with this, like I said, because this has, uh, like you said, different consistency. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it goes really well with that. So It's delicious. It's a winner. And people can get swordfish everywhere, Steve. What would you say is like an equivalency for the, is there an equivalency to this beer? Uh, sure. There's a lot of black IPAs out there. Very right. popular. Um, you can do a, any porters that have a nice hot fill. That okay. would go really nicely. But you can also go lighter with this. You could definitely do beer to guards. You can do Belgian IPAs uh, where they have a little more of that banana notes in them okay. uh, from the yeast strain. Uh, you could also do Marzins and Dunkels and German lagers if you're a fan of those. 
Um, even an extra special uh, bitter would go really nicely from England. So there's a wide range that swordfish can encompass. A lot of it's the accoutrements. I did the, the sauce and the asparagus, but which I could have gone something like onions and maybe a little uh, mushrooms on it and stuff, and it would have had more depth of flavor for to match the malts, but I wanted to let the malts play and right. show off the swordfish, so I thought it would be a really good pairing. Well, this was delicious. Thank you very much. Sure thing. All right, everybody, thanks for coming to another Master Pairings. Cheers. And we're back. That's, That's so not a good Stephen Johnson. Good. It was close. I thought, no. I thought I did pretty well. Come no. on. Fine. It's it, was, maybe, it, was, it was an approximation. You know what? I wasn't, it wasn't it's, just a Stephen Johnson impression. It's a weef in per interpretation, not a Darth Weef. That's where I'd put it. Oh, wow. I, don't, yeah, I have not just, yet achieved yeah, Darth status. Yeah, you have not achieved guess, Darth You're still just an right. apprentice. All right. All right. <laughs> so. It was, well, my, yeah. it was my first attempt. I thought I did pretty well. So but anyways. How did you like that master pairings? Well, if I could have had some, yeah. it would have been great. It made you jealous, didn't it? It did. I'm sorry. Really and I kind of feel that way sometimes when I'm watching yeah. the show. I'm like, oh, people that watch this are like, oh, I wish I could have that. And I'm like, so I know, do. I know, I know how that yeah. is. Yeah, <laughs> so do, because they're awesome. <laughs> yeah. But uh, make it at home. Do okay. It. Or, I can't know, wait. I love it. As you're driving home. down the road, like you're on the freeway, just be like cooking it in the back. Uh, Honestly, can't like, really do that, but. Uh, like last it's week. It's not the safest. I was <laughs> last open flames on the road. No, <laughs> right. last week I was watching the the bacon bread. Oh yeah, yeah. and I was yeah. sitting there because mm -hmm. we actually had it at a, a dinner at Stone. Mm -hmm. I think it was the cigar dinner, and it was amazing. So I'm sitting there watching dinner. it like I was literally drooling, like watching yeah. John eat the bread, the uh, the bacon bread. So or bacon mm -hmm. toast, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. you guys have got to have stories to tell. So I'm going to ask Couple. each of you to tell me your favorite on the road story. Like what, if I say, tell me a story, what's the first mm. thing that pops into your head, Maria? Go. I would say, uh, <laughs> crazy, this local guy we met at Bear Republic Brewery in Hel oh, yeah, well, Heldsburg. Yeah, yeah, you're up in that zone of the Central California where... <laughs> Shit can get yeah, a little crazy like, yeah, up in like, there. That, like, that's like central NorCal. Like, yeah, that's, that's, like that's like hippie green, green, green. slash weed zone. Yeah. High, heavy, heavy use weed zone. Well, you never know when you go into a bar how local the guy is. So you don't want to offend mm -hmm. him or make fun of him on the side. And, you know. Right. But this guy, I mean, he was older gentleman. Had twisted his mustache for so long that it literally came out to like... Wow. Here. I mean, it, it was outside of his it was, body, right? Like, so <laughs> it kind of like brushed up against you. So I put Brian next to him at the bar. Uh, I didn't want to sit You're like, you mustache. need to be poked by mustache man. Yeah. And, you know, it took like, probably he, less than 45 seconds for him to latch on to us and start, you know, talking. Yeah, so he was talking. Which meant that he was a local because he yeah. recognized you as not being locals yeah. and totally was like, you, out. you are my best friends forever now. Yeah, exactly. that, that's definitely. I think happens quite a bit sometimes. Yeah. But he was great. I mean, I, we definitely had a great time talking to him, but he told this really gnarly story about people's fascination just, with uh, his mustache. Because I was I fascinated. Right. I had to ask him. It's a draw. And, uh, so uh, it I bet he gets out, a lot of the ladies. Yeah. Just so because of that. So it turns out this, this girl wanted to take a picture with him and uh, ended up putting the mustache in her mouth. Oh. Which is just oh, that's horrible. Nasty. But then she bit oh. it off. It's wax. She yeah. bit it off. She bit it off, and he was so mad. Oh, I bet. He was so mad because then he has this short mustache. <laughs> long side, you know? like, to me, that was just so. So in, re in reality, not only had he been doing it for so long that it was that wide for you, yeah. he did it twice. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, 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 could, I, up on that. I could just imagine that feeling of lopsidedness. Yeah. Exactly. Because you know? you're like, it's like when you cut a cat's whiskers. Yeah, I've got to cut like, this other uh, one, but I just can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> so deep, to be fair, in it's case like you're watching, I had a great like a time pole, that yeah. night, but... <laughs> well, also, yeah. that's that's if you story. are watching, yeah. please email me at steven at newbreedthursday.com. Let me know where you are because I want to do a show with you right now. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And also, I like want to be like, okay, you got, you got to stand over here. <laughs> you you got to imagine the dude like that has learned not to turn around too fast. You know what I mean? Someone's beside him is like, what? Like, Wham! them in the face. Ah, my eye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I, hear, I, I imagine he hears the horse. Wilhelm scream a lot in his life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. Well, I don't like to talk or uh, think the about wind. the cream that men use in their life. <laughs> Just saying. Wow. 
And, and, and it went there. there. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, so Brian, tell us your favorite on the road story. Uh, the first thing that pops into my head is um, about a year ago, we were out uh, in some BLM land in uh, Arizona. BLM land, what Quartet. is that? Because uh, I've heard of BFE. Bureau of Land Management. Oh, Bureau oh. of Land Management. Yeah, because I was totally like... I was thinking BFE or... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, I've heard of BFE, I've well never heard of BLM. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah that's pretty much more. what it is. It's just yeah. this big area, a ton of RVers. Some government there. official was like, BFE is not appropriate. We need to create an organization, <laughs> a like body we, to manage that. The organization. BLM. <laughs> we need to think of a better name for this. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we were hanging out with some uh, some other RVers who were uh, full timing, but also working from the road. So they're a little younger than uh, the retirees who uh, we also meet a lot. Mm. And uh, two of them just happened to be traveling carnies. Mm. Interesting. So, yeah. So um, were they not traveling with their carnival? Not at the time. No, no, they weren't. Actually, I think they were on their way to uh, go to one in, uh, oh, okay. in the south. I feel like that, like, jump from carnival to carnival. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're, this they're isn't like... Like, y'all need a sword swallower? That's what yeah. that is. Okay, so it's not like throw the ball at these Now, I've heard that, but only <laughs> in gay Or a bearded bars. lady. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, hey, what's up? You need a lady with a beard? <laughs> <laughs> also heard Actually, that in a gay bar once. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> so, you go to the gay bars a lot. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so we were hanging out with them, got to know them pretty well, and they decided to put on an impromptu show out in the middle of this desert. Um, Just the two of them? Sweet. Yeah. The two of them, but there was a group of us that like, we had uh, all met. And what did they do? What did they do? Um, they did everything from uh, pounding nails into their nose. They call that the human blockhead. Right. Uh, breathing fire, eating fire. Oh, so, and... so you ran into Brian Brushwood. <laughs> It sounds like they ran into Schmaltz Brewing Company. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much. Uh, But then they finished it off with some sword swallowing and the... uh, the Which doesn't mean the same thing for you that it did for me in the gay bar. At the gay bar, once again, yeah. You want to see some sword swallowing? Yeah, I was like, no, not (laughs) even a little bit. This is a really really wild experience you had in this bar, wasn't it? (laughs) It was in in Minneapolis. The gay bars there are kind of... Crazy. Wow. But they're a lot of fun. Yeah. So try them out. I'm going to take your word for it. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're a lot of fun. <laughs> so, um, yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah. So the finale was uh, Alex swallowing a neon tube of light. Wow. Yeah. I, I would, like, okay, the sword I can kind of understand because, like, yeah. once you get that down, like, you know what you can and can't do with it. A neon <laughs> tube, if that breaks inside of you, you're kind of fucked. Going, yeah. to, like, going to a poison control you're, you're, center. Exactly. Uh, you will likely die that night. <laughs> which, so. we're out in the middle of nowhere, so that's most likely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's good place like, where everyone's just like, oh. yeah. That's yeah, what the, everybody, like, everybody else in his trailer's like, oh, we gotta set up a tent far away. <laughs> Put him over there, out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> Luckily, so. they were professionals. So they right. knew what they were doing. I don't suggest you try this, but yeah. he had a foot switch to cut the power in case that did happen. Which now, is also when, kind when, of some okay, showmanship. So, well, yeah, when he had it in him, could you see it? Yes. You could see it. You see it. Oh, right that's here. so creepy. So, yeah, oh, I got it. Turning it on awesome. and off yeah. and you can see it. Yeah, I was going to say, you had to do the strobe action with the foot yeah. switch. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Was that's cool. awesome. Wow, I bet he gets all the ladies. Yeah, he's got a really good one. Or the dudes. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. God, you guys have such an awesome life. Well, well I'm really jealous right now, actually. We, it, it helps that we meet awesome people like you guys and like the carnies mm-hmm. to help right make on. this trip interesting. I so mean, that's we're it's all carnies. About. Mm. Um, you guys, thank you so much for like no, driving. I mean, I think this is probably the biggest detour you've ever taken to come out to the, our Paris. BFE, BLM, <laughs> BLM, CA. Yeah, so uh, thank you guys for coming out. We're really happy to have you in the show. Free State, thank you so much for sending us some Definitely. beer f- so that we could represent Lawrence, Kansas, which yeah. I think Kansas, we've done Boulevard, right? I don't know if we've done Boulevard. This may be the first Kansas episode. No, Ooh. you did tall grass. Oh, we did do tall grass. That's right. Ah. Yeah. Ah. All right. So can. sorry, Free State, you're not the first. One, but you know, they were the oh, first. Oh, good job with but the, not show on the show. Knowledge. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well. So, anyway, cheers to that. Until next week, stay safe, drink beer. <laughs>